everybody. Today's guest for online interview of our page Ballet Through Lies is Zilard Macher, a versatile ballet artist. During his successful dance career as a soloist, he also finished his studies of ballet pedagogy and of dance theater, theory. He gained uh, MA of choreography and arts doctorate with the title, The Development of Forum Language of Ballet in the 20th and 21st Century, creating synthesis on stage and in ballet education. He works as pedagogue, member of jury for ballet competitions and as dance critic. I warmly welcome you, Zillard, and I pass the word to Tatiana. Thank you. Hello, Zillard. Nice to, nice to meet you here on our channel. Uh, now we are in uh, Hungary. I mean, you are in Hungary, we are in Slovenia, but we have our first guest coming from Hungary. And uh, I'm really happy to, to have you here. Uh, we would like to talk more about your really excellent career and uh, the variety of things that you were doing uh, throughout your life. Uh, and you come from such a tiny little city in, in the eastern part of Hungary. Uh, am I right? The <laughs> correct way geographically, but Jer is your, is your uh, hometown. And then you started to dance. What was the motivation to become a dancer first? Uh, actually, I, I was born in Tatabanya. It is a little bit closer to Budapest. It is it ex exactly halfway between Jer and Budapest, actually, to the to the uh, railway uh, line of uh, between Budapest and uh, Vienna, actually. So it's to the western part of Hungary. And uh, but it's it's uh, actually even a smaller uh, town as uh, than Dior. So when I was five years old, uh, my my mates in the kindergarten they they were talking about ballet in the kindergarten, and that's why I heard about ballet. That was the first time I heard about ballet, and I don't know why I started to be interested. And my mother, uh, um, we went with my mother to the ballet school and I started uh, teaching ballet at five years old, when I was five years old. And uh, it, it it's was not the a very first time I, I fell in love with the ballet, uh, dancing on the music, with music, the whole atmosphere. And I have to tell you the truth that the, the teacher was a fantastic uh, person. She was a super nice pedagogue for ballet for children. So actually, it was also her personality that uh, made me uh, get uh, love ballet in the first time at the, on the very first ballet class, actually. Then what, what happened? Uh... You finished schools and uh, and everything, and you then started to to dance. Uh, you know the yeah. roles on the stage that you made are really the list is long. As I told you, I started when I was five, and after the very first ballet class, I went to this beautiful teacher and I told her that uh, Ilineni, that was her name, I'm going to be a professional ballet dancer, and of course she was laughing. And she 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 told me that okay let's let's see and you have to work a lot for that and first of all when you are going to be ten years old you have to uh, go to the state ballet institute and you you have to start your professional um, studies and. Uh, uh, my life uh, had a curve, so I had it differently because the Dior Ballet was then a, a very nice company led by Ivan Marco, the former soloist with Béjar Ballet. Uh, and uh, he created this uh, brand new company and it was really, really famous in Hungary. So, uh, and they established a school as well. So I decided to go to Dior and that's why uh, you read about during my biography and I started my professional studies for ballet in Dior 
and I spent six years there. And after I was uh, auditioning for the Hungarian State Ballet Institute called at that time uh, Hungarian Dance uh, like Academy. It was a college then. And since we are a university already, but uh, then I applied and I, I, they accepted me. And I, I, the last three years I finished in the Hungarian Dance Academy. And after my diploma, I got the contract to the Hungarian State Opera House, the Hungarian National Ballet when I was 19. You, you were uh, starting your career as, um, at the time of also the political transition. It's lots of things were happening in yes. Europe. Yes. Uh, maybe this is also an interesting uh, point of view for from the artistic uh, side, you know, and then you then you then you conquered the the world. You went you went outside and you continued your stud studies abroad. And I can imagine uh, as knowing that, um, for instance, foreign languages were not so common to know to speak, except uh, uh, German in in Hungary. How did you how did you cope with that communication things and the tradition that you've had um, starting as a dancer, which I suppose was was very strongly like a really classical um, classical classical ballet. Uh, when I was in the school in the first years, that we had to learn Russian. It was obligatory, but after the changing of the political system in the in um, 89, 90, they stopped uh, teaching uh, Russian in schools. So that that was the time when I was like uh, 14, 15. I started to learn in the school English. So that is the only foreign language I speak because I already forget, unfortunately, Russian. And uh, but after we started to learn English in the school, and actually that time after the changing of the political system, I think the in in the life of the Opera House and the Hungarian National Ballet, it was not really. Uh, a visible or uh, strong change because uh, the company was already a very established company. They already opened, the, uh, let, let's say, already opened the borders in the 70s. And uh, it, the Budapest company had a really uh, versatile repertory already from also not from the, just from the Russian heritage or the Soviet era and of course the Hungarian heritage, but we already had a lot of Western ballets from the 70s. And so actually the company had a really beautiful repertoire. It was one of the, the richest in the world. So the change in the political change, we just maybe felt that uh, maybe the directors changed more quickly on the top of the, the, the opera house and uh, Sometimes we felt that the po political part is a little bit, uh, it has a big effect on the how which uh, director is coming next. But uh, otherwise, we, we didn't really feel that the political changes were like uh, happening. So actually, I had a uh, really nice uh, um, period in the opera house when I started uh, dancing. And uh, I think the most interesting part was that I started to learn the pedagogy immediately after the school. I, when I got uh, my dancer's diploma, my dancer's degree, and after I finished the teacher's training, I immediately started to teach when I was, when I was 23. So that is quite early and it's not, uh, uh, it's not too common to start this early, especially in Hungary. Well, was there ever a uh, doubt of what you want to do in, in life, like dance more or become a teacher? Yeah, so it, it went like a parallel or how? Yeah, it's interesting. When I was, as I told you, when I was five, I, five, I decided to be a dancer. 
but uh, I, I was always uh, attracted to the pedagogy also in a normal school, you know, that was my plan B actually, if I cannot be a dancer or I couldn't reach the, the, this height of in dance, then maybe I, I, I would uh, have uh, turned to uh, pedagogy and it was, uh, it was uh, the Hungarian language and also biology, that was my other, the plan B to be a teacher of those subjects but uh, I was lucky enough and maybe talented enough to be a professional dancer. So, so actually to, to be a teacher was also part of the story from quite an early age. And, uh, and I thought after, after finishing my dancer's uh, degree, I thought maybe it's the best to go on immediately to learn when I'm, when I'm young. And it happened that uh, the school needed young teachers at that time, so that's why I got invited to the school right after my diploma as a teacher. And first of all, it, I was an assistant of uh, ballet teachers, but a lot of things happened in two months. And after two or three months, I already got my own class when I was 23. So since I'm 23, I, I'm a... Um, teacher, uh, like uh, with the old rights, I'm a, a normal teacher. I'm not just an assistant since I was 23. Uh, that's that's very interesting uh, because usually dancers think this comes as a second career after they finish the dancing and then they start to think about it. Then they start to, you know, educate themselves uh, in this direction. So you, do you think um, maybe a good idea of, of somebody would also be to do this, um, you know, hand in hand with the dancing and teaching all together, or you are such an exemption? Um, <clears throat> for me, it was, somehow for me, it was not a, a question to do this because I, I, I when, when I started to teach I felt already that it's also my it's also my life and also the way of how I should go on of course it was uh, maybe a scary step or maybe it had a big effect also on my dancing career I'm not sure uh, who knows now you know after those years but uh, I think it was also really nice that I was really, really young and I could show everything to the students. And uh, uh, for example, with my first class, we only had 10 years between us. So it was almost the same age, you know, and that's why it was, it's a more close um, connection with the students. They felt that they have a young uh, uh, teacher. Also, they could see me dancing on stage live and um, actually they they could follow my career as uh, getting to be a soloist so it was uh, interesting also in that sense of course it was super difficult for me i didn't feel that at that time but it was super difficult because for example i finished my performance at uh, i don't know half past 10 and then you you went home and you you tried to fall asleep, but you couldn't. And then in the early morning, I had to get up and go to the school. And uh, uh, it was uh, from the first moment, I felt a super big responsibility uh, as a teacher because the students' uh, professional life, lives, it's in your hand, you know? So it was from the very first time I felt this big responsibility so it was not just going to the school and give a class, but, but it was really, really important to be there really and uh, to be with open eyes and open heart and open to pass the knowledge, you know, to the students and fix their problems and technical uh, problems. So actually it was, it, it was really a super important part of my life immediately with a bigger responsibility. 
Can you can you describe just briefly then uh, your dance career? What would be like the first first memory, the strongest memory that you still um, keep uh, about your dancing career? Was it the uh, you know what was important to you as as a dancer? Was it I don't know some elements uh, in dancers' uh, career which you find important to share? Um. As I told you, as I decided to be a dancer very early. So since that point, it was really the, the strongest part of my life, and it was my aim, and it was it was the path I already chose very early. So actually, uh, ballet and dancing, and to be a dancer, and also uh, learning a lot about different fields or aspects of the ballet and dancing was also a very important part always so actually i feel that maybe it was uh, too 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 important in a way for me being a dancer and being an artist and of course uh, if you are not uh, super talented and you you don't have the the best uh, body or the best uh, uh, talent for dance it's always it, it is always a bit dif more difficult to reach the you know the the positions for example or to get the roles and you have to work more than the the gifted ones so i was always the the one who loved ballet who worked very hard um, who felt this responsibility as a teacher, as a dancer also, but uh, I never gave up the fight, you know, and I was uh, working, working, working. And that's why I got the best result in school already and had uh, the opportunity to go on summer courses uh, abroad and uh, also in the operas slowly but surely i started to get soloist roles smaller ones bigger ones principal roles so actually i was not the most successful dancer of the history of the opera house but still i had a lot of opportunities and beautiful roles and beautiful periods when i was working with choreographers or uh, ballet teachers or ballet masters in the opera so actually it was really really nice um, uh, as a career as well so um, now the main point of your life is of course is teaching and you also travel the world you participate in different juries and uh, competitions and of course the knowledge that you had and uh, that you have now and uh, all the experience, this must be really important to have if you want to be in these positions as a, you know, as, a, as an observer of the dancer or of the company or somebody on stage, um, you know, the abilities that you have must be important to be really uh, taken seriously in this role. Yes, as I told you, I had uh, always from the first moment I, I felt this responsibility. So, of course, uh, I got the knowledge of, for example, we use the Vaganova system in the in the school, which is uh, which is a really established and it's a really nicely built up system to teach classical ballet for children. And of course, the Vaganova system and especially in Hungary improved a lot during the decades. And we opened to more to uh, the Western styles of ballet as well. And we always uh, followed, followed the, the repertory of the opera house and uh, actually the repertory of the world. So that's why it's very important for me always to learn and go and watch performances. Uh, not just uh, in Budapest or not just uh, the performances I can reach in Budapest, but also I travel a lot and I watch performances abroad and uh, I try to follow what is happening in the ballet world and what are the, the aspects that they uh, 
they want to have from a young dancer, you know, they, the, what is, um, uh, yeah, actually how to, how to open, uh, how to be open and stay open to give the student um, uh, up-to-date knowledge, you know, and make them the best possible and most versatile and um, dancers to be able to get good contracts, you know. So it's always uh, important for me. And that's why it's, it's, it's not possible to stop learning and uh, be open and be curious about the ballet world. Okay, sometimes it's not easy when you are tired or when you feel that you don't get enough, uh, maybe um, you don't get back enough from the, the T system, maybe, maybe from your students as well. Sometimes it's not easy, but you know, it's my, it's in my DNA, so I cannot really. Um, change myself and the way of thinking and the way of how, how I like and love ballet, actually. Well, what, what is the, the feedback from your, from your students, students from the dancers in companies that you meet and from, from the dancers around the world when you, when you share your advice and expertise to, to their work and help them, support them, coach them? you know, for different situations they meet. What's the, their feedback to you? Uh, fortunately, I have a lot of uh, experience already and a lot of feedbacks as well from my own students from the school, the other students from the school, they work with me during the years because of the school's, uh, you know, performances and not just my own class I work with. And also uh, I worked uh, abroad with also with ballet companies in schools, workshops, master classes. Uh, I also, I was also teaching uh, ballet methodology, uh, for example, in English in, uh, in Zagreb University, art university. So funnily, for example, if I go to Zagreb, the, the whole company is my ex-student. Are, they are the, my ex-students because a lot of dancers are from our school, Hungarians and non-Hungarians as well. And a lot of uh, former soloists or dancers, they, they were uh, uh, learning uh, ballet methodology from me. So it's super funny when I go and watch a performance, for example, in Zagreb and uh, the half of the company was my student at one time in, in, the, in the past. So yes, of course, I had a lot of uh, positive feedbacks, which gives me extra energy or more motivation to go on and continue. Uh, also with my own students from the past, they also shared, they uh, thought about what was missing or what is not good or, you know, how to change the, the old habits in pedagogy, you know, which is, uh, of course, a bit different in ballet because ballet needs discipline a lot and super you know, the, the, the technique is really, uh, oh my God, what is the word? So it's, it's not a free technique, you know, a lot of rules you have to, you have to use every single day. So yes, um, they were also told, told me about the problems they had with me, for example. And of course you learn, you learn from that as well a lot. And you start to think about it, you, you start to change, or at least you try to change. And uh, I think uh, that alternative pedagogy is not really uh, connected with classical ballet. So it has, it's not, it's not really working together. But of course, uh, I can feel even on my, um, since my studies as a dancer that the, the, the whole uh, 
school system actually changed in Hungary and it's super different because we have different generations as well uh, as students and also the way of teaching mm -hmm. in, in the university, even the small ones when, when we, uh, we teach them, it's, it's super different than it was before, like in the 80s and 90s when I was uh, learning ballet. So yes, feedback is very important as always. <laughs> And uh, of course, I had, uh, I have a, a few really beautiful sentences in my memory, in my mind that um, that will always uh, give me extra motivation or the you know what helps me when I I'm down a bit because I I really had really beautiful sentences or beautiful thoughts about my work uh, during the years actually during the decades because it's 25 years now I started to teach so anniversary time <laughs> yes this is really long long time and lots of experience but you were talking about new dancers coming and new ideas also not just about the dance but also about the world uh which young people nowadays have it's kind of different for them to how they live now and how we were living uh decades ago uh what can you what can you say about that you know we let's say we don't know so what's the main topic of today of young dancer uh coming from the school to to the company where you help them to do the transition to the company, but what's their main aim? What do they really want? You know, maybe it would be interesting to hear um, th this side of, of the ballet world story. Um, in the last few years, I feel that the, the, these days, the, the, also the history is happening now, nowadays in the, I don't know, the politics and how the world goes uh, and uh, the everyday life of the people in Hungary or Europe or in the world, actually, it's, it's not really good for classical ballet, maybe not even any kind of dance because, uh, for example, you know, you have to learn classical ballet for eight or nine years, it depends on the school, uh, but at least six years with a um, with, um, discipline and everyday hard work. And, and it's not really, uh, uh, how you, it that doesn't happen in, the, in, the, in everyday life with the children or with the young people. Also, they can see on TV shows that if you go to a talent show, you know, after five minutes, you are a star already and you are rich already, or you don't, don't even have to work because you can be an influencer and uh, sitting at home and producing something actually worthless maybe. And then you can be a millionaire from, from it. Um, fortunately or unfortunately, we, we have one of the, one of the most, um, the biggest influencer, a young influencer in Hungary. Also, he was our student actually, but he stopped learning dancing because, uh, it was better way to get rich and, uh, and yeah, it's not easy as a teacher because you have to say every single day to your student that you have to work harder, you have to work hard actually, you have to stretch your knees even if you don't want. <laughs> we should repeat this exercise as many times as I suggest or I ask because it has to be there. You, we have to build up muscles, which is not easy, blah, blah, blah. So actually it's... Uh, it's difficult now and the way of uh, the way how young people started to think about being um, you know living their lives it's also super different they as i as i feel they don't have that long perspectives or plans in their lives as we had before so i don't think it's possible nowadays that um, a young young boy at 5 decides to be a dancer for example 
because uh, even when they are like uh, in the school, they are started to learn ballet and we, the teachers or in the school, we think that they want to be a dancer, but st they still not sure to be a dancer when they finish the school or they start to find a job. But if, if they, they fail on the first audition, then they stop or if, if they go to a company and it's it's not they think it's not uh, not interesting enough or they don't have the chance to be a soloist almost immediately then they skip and they stop uh, being a dancer so it's actually getting more and more difficult to teach dance in the world i think and also super sad that we have less and less boys year by year even now in hungary 10 years ago, we were super proud because we have still a lot of boys in the school. And we heard from the colleagues from the world that they don't have boys or they have really just one or two uh, boys in the classes. And we had eight, nine, 10, and it was really, really nice. Nowadays, it's the same. We have to, I don't know, we have to create boys from <laughs> dust, you know. <laughs> So you think this could create a problem for the future of, of ballet art? This what you were just telling or what 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 could be done? Uh, you know, of course, we don't want that. You know, we want to support to to maintain the ballet and the classical ballet in its form as a kind of historical way of making art uh, because it's still creative, even the contemporary ballet is very creative and it's very, you know, enjoyable and everything. And it's also very important. Uh, but if, if this kind of things, as you were saying now happens, like a total change of the mentality of the society, what does this mean, you know, for the, where, where does this start? Does it start with you then as a, as a teacher, when you invite young people to, to this world of ballet? It's already it's already a difficult part when we audition for the school. We we organize the auditions every year and we advertise it and we try to reach the people to get to know that it's still existing. Hello, this uh, former State Ballet Institute, which is now a Hungarian Dance University, it still exists and ballet still exists. And we need boys and of course we need girls as well um, so the problem starts already when we have the auditions and uh, uh, thank god we have a lot of um, nice teachers uh, in hungary for example even in the country and thank god they love ballet and if they see a talented uh, girl or boy they they suggest them to come to the school. And you know, it's also really difficult because the, somehow the parents, um, they, it's a tendency that they don't let the, the, the children come to, for example, to Budapest to learn, even though we have a beautiful dormitory and uh, the campus is really in one uh, place and they don't have to go even out, out to, to eat or anything so super uh, supportive and safe environment but still they don't let the children come to budapest and learn ballet so it is also a stronger tendency nowadays just like protect over protect you know the children at home and uh, or or the or the for example now i have a new class i started a new class just two days ago because my the last class was graduating in July, so they went to companies. So I now, now I have a brand new class, and also now I have a one week already a one week uh, conversation with uh, with uh, parents because they were divorced, and uh, the mother wants to support the, the boy to be a dancer, and the father doesn't support the boy to be a dancer. So somehow I. I started a conversation with them how to maybe keep this boy for the dance world because he's talented, he has good body for the ballet, he's motivated, he wants to be a dancer, but 
but at home but at home the family is not really sure that they want to let him to be a dancer so so many problems can occur now and also for example at my time actually before my time it was a it was a really big chance for young people for example travel to travel abroad you know having tour with the company and uh, even in the communist time let's say communist time it was uh, it was the possibility to go to western countries and uh, actually get a passport but nowadays the world is open you know everybody can go anywhere and the parents they have the money they can travel with the children so actually it's not not that interesting maybe also this part for the dancers yeah. and yes and hard work is not that fashionable i think among the for the young people actually so well, let's hope something changes <laughs> Now the value of art that we that we all manage to to bring this this topic up front and you know uh, maybe maybe we will find some sensitive souls for the future to be a part of 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 the education and then of the stage work as well. Uh, yeah, in classical well, ballet we... already, you know, a lot of times they said that classical ballet is dead and somehow it's not dead at all. And I, I agree with you that it can be super interesting even in the 21st century because it, it always improves and changes and uh, um, have a lot of effects uh, on itself, you know. Um, a lot of things was uh, affected, had effect on, on ballet. Uh, that's why I wrote my thesis, uh, my doctorate also about this on, on this subject because it's super interesting how the, uh, the ballet, which is not always classical, but based on an academic uh, 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 technique and uh, language, actually. And but it changed a lot since you know Sylphid and Giselle to Forsyth, and and uh, I don't know nowadays we had a super contemporary piece on the graduation show in July from Jacopo Godani and. It was incredible how the dancers, the young dancers enjoyed that and how different it was even from Foresight. So since Foresight, we have a lot new and uh, um, sometimes I'm really surprised that the, the human body can, can produce this kind of, uh, you know, movements and speed and, and uh, super uh, versatile uh, way of movements and using the body you know so it, it can improve and it can be it can be contemporary in a good way as well like saying something to the young students you know and the, even even the older ballerinas they were super excited about that piece and it was such a nice experience that uh, after the performance the really really old uh, colleagues of us were telling us that it was really a big uh, thing, uh, joy to see some new and fresh uh, way of ballet and way of moving. So, yeah, hopefully it stays alive. Somehow we have to fight for it. Actually, also in our university, we, we started to uh, organize new things uh, to be able to get more students young ones and how to communicate, how to change the communication of the school and uh, the whole system to reach people, to reach young people. Um, this week on Saturday, we will have uh, like an open day and uh, children, they can uh, go to classes and uh, have a little bit of ballet, a little bit of modern, and a little bit of ballroom dances, a little bit of, I don't know, improvisation, you know, so they can try and maybe a few people will, a few small, small people or young people, children, they will get uh, a good impre impression and uh, maybe 
they have this moment what I had when I was five, actually, that, wow, it's great, and I want to do this. One thing we were discussing before where uh, we started this talk was um, your experience in, in Asia, uh, where you said that dancers coming, for instance, from Japan, uh, want of course to change the environment and to come to the to the you know to western world uh where of course they don't have um this strong tradition of classical ballet but uh what do you think there they own the discipline <laughs> and they own this kind of um you know really severe way of education which is which is something unbelievable to, to us, even to those who study hard. Um, but does this make them special nowadays in a way? Or what maybe the other way uh, of, of asking you, um, what is that they find interesting in Western, in, in classical ballet? And why do they want to come to this tradition? What is this? magic or what's interesting for them there and what you do also and how how do you prepare them for this uh for this big step actually when uh, we were talking about the previous question i already wanted to tell you that that uh, nowadays in um, european companies and in america you have a lot of asian dancers you know from japan from korea china and uh, even other countries from Asia. And of course, the ex-Soviet uh, parts of uh, not just Russia and Ukraine, but those countries uh, also produce nice dancers and uh, South America. So we have uh, a lot of places in the world that uh, they still love ballet or they still the the young pe for the young people it's still a big chance to be someone and to be rich or to live a nice life life so actually uh, the future is ballet now it's a little bit uh, strange for us because we have to accept that uh, the even the national companies they have a lot of foreigner dancers and those dancers who want to dance really and they love to dance and they have the passion still uh, even though nowadays or even though the times are different nowadays um i don't know exactly actually why japanese people love that much ballet but it's incredible because they as i heard in japan they have fifteen thousand ballet schools and just in, I think in Tokyo, 5,000 or something. So actually it's, uh, it's an it's enormous amount of uh, schools actually. I think, uh, yes, maybe they more disciplined than the European people now or young people now. Although we also see that during the last one or one and a half decades, since we have a lot of Japanese students, they also changed a lot, not in a good way, actually, or not all of them uh, that disciplined or hardworking anymore. But, but still, there's a big difference. You're right. And uh, in Japan, I think they, they uh, also think about ballet as a way of you know, sport or hobby uh, or um, a way of uh, fitness, you know. So that's why also it's very, um, I think, popular in Japan. And uh, yeah, maybe they have more connection also from their culture that the movement and dance and expression uh, is still, it was already part of the, you know, the Japanese theater for, for thousands of years. So actually it has still uh, some connection with ballet in a strange way, actually, but, but they, they also have from a different roots, but the, somehow the same uh, um, history of movement and, 
at one point of in history, and I don't know, at the end of the 19th century or the very beginning of the 20th, they realized that there's this ballet and it's, uh, it's also interesting for them. But of course we can see the difference, difference in the cultures because, you know, for example, to touch, a, touch another person during the dance, even when you have partnering and pas de deux, it's already, it can be already a big problem for the student or, or when you should talk about, um, I don't know, body shape or a little bit about weight. Sometimes you have to, I know, I know it's not, uh, not uh, allowed anymore in the US to talk about this, but it's also about protecting the body, you know, because of the physical uh, um, part of the, of ballet. So when you have to talk about body and shape, it's also sometimes problematic with the Japanese students. So we can, we can see that the culture is really, really uh, different, but slowly and, but surely they adapt to Hungary and um, not too easily, but they learn English. Sometimes they even learn Hungarian. And when they finish the school, they already feeling more comfortable in the ballet world. And of course they have a lot of, uh, um, they want to be part of this uh, European culture and the ballet world and, or, or the American actually, because they love it. And it's actually, I also heard from some of them that they, they want to leave just, not just because of ballet, they want to leave uh, abroad, not in Japan, because it's, you know, super closed and the people are not happy sometimes in Japan. It's too crowded, too many people. And um, so even, even the way of living is uh, it's, uh, interesting for them and they want to, to live in Europe or America or in the world beside or outside Japan. One thing which we didn't touch yet, but you mentioned before was... Uh about your writing, about the books or thesis or articles that you have done. This is very unusual. I could, I mean, I know some some dancers are very, um, you know, orientated also and able to write and to, to, to do researches and, you know, uh, leave something in written behind them. Uh, but, you know, the... How did you find that uh, work of being a, being a, a researcher and uh, you know how, how because usually as a as a teacher you go one on one or you go as a teacher to the group and then when you sit and you write and uh, you know things that you write about and so on you share on a on a different level what what do you think is the value that someone like you would this huge career and experience does this, you know, decides to write and to make it this way publicly available? Um, I don't know. It really starts from very early as well, because I, I was always um, a good student on academic fields as well. And I really loved um, even the subject of Hungarian language and Hungarian literature, you know, or literature in the school and uh, I think I al also always had this kind of um, good communicate I had the good communication skills but not just orally but in written you know I don't know it happened and uh, uh, actually it was also it is also connected a little bit to my first teacher in Tatabanya this beautiful uh, um, pedagogue who started to teach me on classical ballet because when I was 11 she, uh, she moved from a from a flat to a smaller one and she had a lot of a uh, lot of magazines the Hungarian dance magazines and a lot of magazines about dance or ballet and uh, she asked me whether I'm interested to get those uh, hundreds of uh, magazines, you know, about ballet, and and I said yes, I'm interested, and um, 
I got a super huge box full with, you know, Hungarian dance magazine. And I started to read articles about ballet, dance, about dancers, lives, performances, you know, critics, about the, the Dior Ballet Company. I was more involved that time and later, later the Opera House. And uh, actually I started to, I also started to read about dance and it was also super important um, super interesting for me that how to write about the performance or how to write about dance dance dancers movement and also it was some somehow part of my education and i was interested in it as well and you know during the the university or college years you have to write a lot actually and of course we had to write about dance as well on um, history of dance or aesthetics of dance uh, on the, these kind of classes or subjects when we learned so so i was interested and there was one time uh, um uh, how you call oh my god so the hungarian dance magazine they they had a competition actually to write about dance and we had to send articles anyhow anything about dance and i i applied i sent uh, an article about the opera house repertory i don't know and i won i was the first first place so I also had success immediately, actually, with the with the writing. So it was also really nice to to think about dance in a different way. I don't know. I was really interested every aspects of ballet. I, I was not only interested to do it, but to teach it, to learn about it, uh, to read about it, to write about it. So somehow it came naturally for me and um, of course when i started to teach and uh, you know the the school after the college level it it went on and we had uh, we we grow and uh, actually it was an aim to be a university one day and in 17 we got it this uh, uh, honor to be a hungarian dance university of course, there's 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 a must to go on with the studies for the teachers and have uh, more diplomas and degrees. And uh, after some really uh, sad years in the school, with the uh, two rectors were uh, um, they died. Uh, two rectors of the school died in actually three years. So it was a super sad time in the school. And uh, after those uh, sad moments, um, suddenly I was uh, director of the school, you know, not director, but director of the institution of uh, artist training. So I also felt the responsibility that I have to uh, I have to be an example for my colleagues that I go on with the degrees, you know, I, I received the doctorate and so somehow, somehow it was natural for me to go on with the studies, even I was interested, of course, but also it was kind of a, a must in a way. Well, it's your, it's your life work and uh, I really would like to thank you before I pass, I ask Natasha, maybe she has, she has a question for you. Uh, but uh, thank you really uh, to, to share this journey uh, with us from, from the early age and uh, what you've done is really nice experience. Of course, we cannot touch all the aspects of your life in such a short time, but um, I'm sure, uh, you know, I will be more careful about what you are doing from now on, for sure. <laughs> and uh, maybe we find another subject to talk about. And I would really like to meet you in person when it's possible to have this opportunity. Thank you very much, uh, Natasha.
Would you like? To... Thank you. I'm also open yeah, to you. me, of course. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this talk. Uh, uh, it was really nice to hear a lot about pedagogy and everything what you do. It's it's really nice, you know, to see a ballet dancer uh, to have um, to 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 work on on different levels and on on different uh, ideas about ballet, which is which is really important, you know. Uh, so I have one question. Um, it's about uh, dance critic. How do you approach the performance? I mean, how do you write about classical ballet? It nowadays it's not so easy, I think. Uh, so how you do it? Who? Good question. I mean, um, as a if I have to like write articles about dance performances. I prefer to write about classical ballet or classical ballet's companies repertoire, you know, because for me, that's more easier than, for example, write about a completely contemporary piece, because still I don't, I know the, you know, the forms, the, the, the movements, the, the rules of classical ballet. I, I know exactly how, how it has to be executed, you know, the movements, when it's perfect or almost perfect, when it's a failure, you know, in technically as well. And uh, also it's uh, very important for me to see artists on stage and it's getting a little bit rare, more rare to see real artists in ballet world. So actually for me, to write about classical ballet is not that difficult. It's more difficult when it's going to more contemporary field, you know, it's uh, because ballet is very, in a way it's very simple with the movements and uh, with the technique, the rules are super clearly there. So you can, you can have a, a you can have a thought about the quality of the dance more easily. And of course, uh, because I I was dancing for um, I don't know twenty five years uh, as a professional and before as a student, so it's as I said, it's in my DNA. So it's easy to write about it. When it's a little bit more contemporary, then then it's more difficult for me to find the right words and. Also, sometimes it's if the, for example, a contemporary piece is very like uh, philosophical, you know, or have a lot of thoughts and feelings that it's super difficult to write about it. But, but I thought maybe I, I'm not able at all. But uh, during the years, sometimes I had to write about more contemporary pieces and, and then I, I, uh, realize that it's easy if I follow my feelings also and uh, what, what what was the effect on me and then it helped to um, a lot to write some thoughts about the pieces and what was what was the piece for example opening what was the piece opening me or I don't know so and actually I had a good uh, um, reactions on those articles so it made me a little bit more confident to uh, to be brave enough to write about a little bit more contemporary things as well but of course I prefer to write about ballet classical ballet yeah okay classical mm -hmm. or I mean contemporary ballet as well so it doesn't have to be sleeping beauty you know <laughs> Okay. okay, I see. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I think we had a very nice talk today. Uh, I'm I'm really glad that we managed to to go through it <laughs> finally. Okay. So thanks a lot, Silad, for joining us, thank and you. Tatiana uh, to conduct the talk. And um, we say goodbye. Thank you. All the best. Bye. To you too. Bye. Thank you.